So in the last few episodes, I have been visiting a Shorin Ryu Dojo in Shuri, Okinawa, under Uema Sensei. There I have done various Kihon movements, Naihan Shodan, and Jion. So if you haven't checked that out, please check that out before watching this one. So in today's video, I'm going to be talking about my overall impression of this whole experience under three categories. And number one is about the sensei, the two senseis that I met. Number two is about the dojo. Number three is about the style itself. So let's get started. I'm gonna start talking about Yasuhiro Uema Sensei, who is the grandmaster of their dojo. Uh, first point, his ability to understand others in a communication was extremely high. So what I'm talking about here is, you know, as you get older, like when I compare myself from when I was 15 years old to now, around 10 years has passed, 9, 10 years has passed, I have gained a lot more knowledge. So when somebody questions me something, I want to give all the information out. Like that's my, you know, ego. But then for them, for the one that questioned me, if they get abundance of information showered at them as, at once, they're gonna get confused, right? So as a person that's answering the question, I must be careful not to bombard them with inf information. I must, you know, answer um, conclusively with supporting details. And that's something, you know, I should be aware of as a coach too and as a sensei. And um, Uema Sensei, compared to myself, has what? 50 plus years of experience so he must have so much more information in his brain that he wants to share when I ask him information however um, he didn't do that he went very um, short at first and wanted me to ask questions so he didn't you know talk about something that was unrelated he just kept it nice and simple and waited for me to uh, you know I guess take the interview to my direction so as an interviewer, I was very thankful for that. And I loved um, his philosophy that karate is like a daily routine. It's something that is delved into your daily life that you just practice normally. Just like um, Matsubai Shiryu Sensei, Shinzato Sensei has mentioned, karate for them is something that's woven into their daily life. So there's nothing that they try extra hard on. Uh, when I heard that, I came back to Tokyo now, or Tokyo or Kanagawa to be precise. Um, I try to think about that. So I'm like, my desk is right there. So I'm working there for like, what, hours and hours every day, editing, um, you know, doing meetings and all. But when I get tired, on the left side of my desk, I have a bowl and a water bottle for me to train. And then if I take three steps this way, there is a home dojo. So, you know, it's just like taking a cup of water, you know, going to, um, the kitchen to drink water same thing like that take a few steps do like what 20 kihong go back to my desk so it's something i try my best to mix karate into my daily life so it becomes more natural and not something that i have to try especially hard to train and especially in this covid era everybody you know has to spend their time at home so if you can prepare something let's say a water bottle or a anything right next to a tissue box then just carry that, practice some punches, go back watching TV, right? So it's something that simple. And if you're that type of person that has to wear a dogi or that has to go to the dojo to turn on that um, karate switch, then I think maybe you should try at least uh, for a few days to see if you can casually practice karate. And about his son, Uema Takeshi Sensei, I, maybe I haven't mentioned it, but their father and son. So about Uema Takeshi Sensei, I think he's the strongest and the most skillful karateka in his 40s that I have encountered. He was so strong and so, his movements are so precise that I couldn't believe. First, I thought he was in his early 30s or mid 30s, but after talking to him, he said he was 46. Can you guys believe that smack came from a 46 year old? Like, it was just, he was just so strong and of course I have you know been seeing a lot of senseis in their 30s and 40s in tournaments um, my senseis at the dojo and you know I thought they were very skillful and very strong but then seeing Uemasan that boundary went pretty high up um, so I think somebody mentioned in the comments of yesterday's video where I did a comparison between Tekki Shodan and Nai Hanchi. So there were the two Nai Hanchis from Matsubai Shiryu and Shorin Ryu and myself doing Tekki. Somebody mentioned that Shotokan, my kata, looked more powerful. And somebody mentioned that maybe that's because of his age. 
、uh, to answer that question or to answer that comment, I think as the、uh, so the sum of power is around the same. I'm younger, so I might have more power, and he's older, so age-wise, I'm I have the advantage. But for power-wise, he's taller and well. I think more well-built than me, so he has more potential, muscular potential. But I'm younger, so that balances out to be, you know, maybe fifty-fifty. However, I think the transmission rate of him getting his power transmitted to the actual technique is a lot higher than me. I still have some waist、um, movements that are losing my potential power to be executed correctly. So through his years of experience, a lot of skills accumulating. Although the movements might look simple, that's not because he's less powerful. That's because he's able to transmit that power in a more direct way than me. So if you guys felt that through the video, I hope、um, you can learn something new from that. And yeah, overall, they they were just amazing teachers. And about the dojo. The dojo was located in Shuri, Okinawa, and if you guys have noticed, Shuri is one of the, the first three karate groups in、um, Okinawa, right? Shuri de Nahate and Tomari de. So within that area, it's not that it's not that big. Maybe in this whole circle, the、um, I would say the diameter would be five kilometers or something like that. And so we were on our way to go to the dojo and to find the Uemasan's dojo. But there were so many dojos within that same street: Kobudo Dojo,、um, Shurite Dojo,、uh, Shorin Ryu Dojo. They were all over the place, so it was just like a karate paradise, karate museum. Just walking there, and that's something you can't really see in my neighborhood, at least. So that was something very special. And about the style, I think the most、um, interesting points that I can take into my future practices for Shorin Ryu from Shorin Ryu is the wrist rotation. Uh, like you see in Naihanchi and Jion, Shotokan uses more hips, so you will see our hips rotating a lot more in our katas.、Um, however, the original、um, karate styles in Okinawa don't rotate the hip as much. Yes, they rotate the hip up around the chest area. They are going to rotate or twist the spine for sure. But as for the hips, they don't rotate it as much. How they generate power is one one component is the wrist. I'm pretty sure you saw me training with that old Okinawa tool like this. That's that's for me to practice this wrist rotation. And I can see right away in, in with Uemasan's movement, although his hips were moving just slightly, it was more of this, just a simple movement like this to put the weight, boom, on here. So that's something I should practice. And being a Shotokan practitioner, I focus more on the hips and not so much on the wrist. So that's something I have to. You know, implement into my future practices in order to get my overall power stronger. So that's my overall impression of、uh, Shorin Ryu. Next, we're going to be visiting a Goju Ryu dojo.、Um, so please look forward to those episodes. Subscribe to my channel, and I'll look forward to seeing you guys next time. Bye bye.